Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, guys, just spam the chat right now with W's. We're taking shot after shot after shot. We're taking shots nonstop. This is a fatty buzz, baby. This is a fatty buzz. Should we go over the games? We definitely could. Guys, if you guys don't know, if you guys don't know, <clears throat> imagine this, right? Imagine this. Ima imagine this, right? Imagine you're playing. Imagine you're playing in a, in a tournament in World of Warcraft. All right. Imagine you're playing in a tournament in World of Warcraft, right? Like you're a huge nerd. You're a complete nerd and you're playing in World of Warcraft. And you're playing in a tournament. And on the weekend that you're playing in the tournament, WizK, your teammate, says, "Oh my god, I have a tooth issue. My no my nerve is ex my nerve is exposed. I can't play. It's so much pain. Toughen up and fucking play the game. Teeth issues aren't bad." You can play with an exposed nerve, right? That's not painful, right? That's nothing. That's nothing. Exposed nerve in your teeth to where you literally cry on the floor. Like, that's nothing. That's nothing. Wake up, get the fuck on, take some Tylenol, and play the game. That's what I'm saying. This game was actually crazy. Because I think at the end of the game... Oh my god, did they... Ha did you guys see this game on broadcast? Um, when Mez was still alive, he was the only one alive. D did they end the game or no? Because there was a point where Mez pressed Lava Burst with Primordial or something. And all of us went to like 5%. We all went to like 5%. It was actually so fried. This game was actually so fried because it was one of those games that's really long, but you don't actually notice, right? Have you guys ever been in like, let's say anybody in the chat, right? If you guys in the chat right now ever played BFA, BFA games were like 10 to 15 minutes on average. Even at like 1500, games in BFA were like 10 minutes long. And whenever you play those games, you don't actually notice that it's that long of a game. Like you play the game and, and sometimes you do. Sometimes you do, but for the most part, you don't really notice that the game is like 10 minutes until you slowly realize that everyone on your team is half HP and it's 50% dampening. And you're thinking to yourself like, holy shit. How have we been in this game for 10 minutes? Like, what are we? what is even going on in this game? So this game was pretty crazy. I think, I think the biggest issue with this game was we didn't really have like a set strategy who the best kill target was and what to do if they were dampening too much to where we couldn't get a, a good setup, right? So we talked a lot about starting to triple dot them to, uh, to triple dot the evoker as well so that he can kind of rot and, uh, and, and lose his mastery buff, but this game was really odd because we're sitting there like doing all these setups and like something small would happen every time, right? Like we tried to do a big go where, you know, someone doesn't have a wall or something and one of us fucks up and somebody gets precog and then he gets a clone. Or we try to do another go and then nobody CCs Mez, so Mez is pressing healing surge four times, right? It was a weird game of us sitting there like, oh my God, we just can't kill anything. But we don't actually realize that the game is this long. I definitely thought this game was crazy though. There was a moment in this game where everything kind of went slow-mo for me and all of us are at 30% health and I'm like, oh my God, like, are we going to die here? No, we can live. We can live. Ah, uh, no, we might die here. No, we can live. We can live. It was a weird game. Weird game for sure. The move is back. We're going to try really hard next cup. We're all playing the game more. We're all turning on our fucking add-ons. We finally, oh my God, this is, this is the biggest W of them all. We finally got Pika to stop using his 2005 WoW UI. We finally got him to turn on CD timers and stop using his WoW UI from 2004. So that's a W. So that's a W, oh my God. This guy plays with no CD timers, dude. He's sitting there like, this is Pika, right? You guys are ready? All right, we're gonna put my spirit link, right? So my spirit link's on cooldown, right? This is him, this is him. You can see, without the number, you can see how lit, how lit up it is, right? This is Pika right here, right? He doesn't have cloak for 10 seconds. While we're dying, he doesn't have cloak for 10 seconds, all right? This is what Pika does. This is Pika right here. He doesn't have cloak for 10 seconds. What does he do? I have cloak in five. I have cloak in one, cloak in one. Cloak in one, cloak in one. Cloak in one. Cloak in one. Cloak in, cloak in two, cloak in one. It's like, this guy's been doing this to us for five years, okay? Five years. Well, that's a W. We got him to turn on his goddamn CD timers. Amazing. All right, let's go. Let's watch the game. So what's crazy about this game 
was whenever you're in a tournament situation, it's so funny because even if, even if, and I, I know a lot of you people, if you're ever playing with your friends or, or Q and arena with your friends, whatever it is, whenever you're at the point where you know that all of you are going to die, unless you're like a, unless you're like a super rager, everyone stays positive. And you're like, oh, it's fine. It's fine that we have no mana and everyone's 20% health. This is good. We can still win this game. We can still win this game. We got to that point in the game where look at look at all of our health right now. Look at our health right now. And all of us are sitting there like, okay, we, we have to run in. We have to run in. And it's like, we could literally die to any Lava Burst proc. Like, if this guy gets an Ascendance proc, we just lose instantly. If he gets an Ascendance proc, we instantly lose. And we're like, we have to run in now. And those, those are always the craziest parts of dampening. We had a life swap there. Wiz presses fade at 1%. Yam dies. And at this point in the game, we're obviously still trying. But I'm, I'm going to explain to you guys what was said in court in a second. So killer, we all run to the pillar. We run to the pillar and, and Pika's like, all right, be chill, be chill, be chill. Everything's fine. Just be chill. We have blind, we have blind, we have blind. And we all run to the pillar, right? Look at us. We're little ants. We're little ants just hanging out at the pillar, waiting to make our bridge across across the gap, right? I think Sidu surrenders here. And the funniest part here about Sidu surrendering, all of us are sitting here like, oh yeah, like look at Mez. Like, you think Mez is going to 1v3 us? You think Mez is going to 1v3 us here? Nah, he can't 1v3 us. There's no way. Let's watch what happens. We get a blind sap. CD surrendered. We get a kidney shot. Look at our health right now, okay? Look at our health. Look at our health. We're at 50%, 40%, 35%. Look at our health. Look at our health right now. Oh my God. We're literally sitting there like, there's no way we die. There's no way we die. We can't die here. We can't die here. It's not possible. It's not possible we die here, dude. It's not possible. Oh my God. If we got 1v3 there, I might've chugged at least five bottles of soju instantaneously. Like mid series, five bottles, gone. Five bottles right there, gone. There's no way. So right now we play we play Shadow Play, we play Shadow Priest Demo, we've tested out Boomy Demo, we play Rogue Shadow Priest with an Evoker, we play with a Shaman, and right now we're at the point where we think, okay, we've got a good win, that game could be a lot better, we could definitely try Evoker, but they're most likely going to play a lot of caster stuff and a lot of Boomy stuff, so we probably stay Shaman, right? So we're, we're kind of thinking this the whole time, they end up picking Ash Mains, which is a pretty uh, pretty neutral map, I would say. Uh, they take the whole time, of course. They lock in Boomy Ellie, Boomy Ellie Evoker again. I think our teammate known as Peekaboo has said it best that we need to play the game in tournaments the way we play on ladder. So normally on ladder, if we're ever feeling good, we're feeling really excited, we're feeling fresh. We always do random strats, right? Like we always do different strats that kind of like throw people off. So this is the game. We're after game number one, we're sitting there and we're talking, we're thinking, okay, let's just open on the evoker. Like, let's just open on the healer. There's no way they're ever gonna expect it. If we sap Mez and then sap Sidu and then try to open Mez, we have to deal with Sam I am blocking us or stunning or, or whatever, or a thunderstorm. So we're sitting there like, okay, let's just, let's just open the healer. Like we open the healer, they're not gonna expect it. It's gonna be completely, completely out of left field. And that's what we did this game. During this whole downtime, we're kind of thinking to ourselves like, okay, we're trying to figure out what went wrong, what went wrong in the matchup. You know, we should be able to triple dot the healer if they're dampening too much because we can't attack them. And then Pika comes up with an opener of opening the healer. And the reason that we opened the healer, for those who might ask, is because if we open Mez, he has Earth Ellie out already. And if you guys don't know, when you have Earth Elemental, the stronger, like the primal Earth Elemental on Ellie Shaman, you can activate a 30% damage reduction from the elemental. So if we sap Mez and open Sidu, or sap Mez and sap Sidu and swap it and then open Mez, he presses his Ellie Shaman wall and Sam I am peels. So we don't really get much pressure. 
He can't. Why, why, why can he can't? Oh, did they get rid of it? So we're terrible. Oh my god. Peekaboo's terrible. They can't even fucking do it. Oh my. They can't even do that anymore. It doesn't fucking matter because the strat is the same. We're going to run in and we're going to kill this healer in five seconds. He has to press every CD or he dies. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So basically we're at a point where obviously aside from that, we don't want to open the shaman because the boomy is going to peel and the shaman has a lot of cooldowns. So the evoker can't press anything while he's CC'd. So if the evoker gets stunned into a stun into a stun, he can't press anything. Unlike Shaman, where Shaman can Thunderstorm, and because the Shaman has Nature's Guardian proc, because the Shaman has a Spore Cloak proc as well, he can always press Burrow after the CC and end up living anyway. So because the Shaman has a lot of cooldowns, that was part of it as to why we thought opening the healer was best. And then uh, let's see what happens. So we run in. I think we sap Mez and open c -Doo. Sap Mez. We open c here. And what, what the best part, the absolute best part of this opener here is we get a sap on Mez. We open c -Doo, And we know that Sam I Am is probably going to try to stun the rogue. So we know Sam's going to stun the rogue or try to bash the rogue. Sam runs in, bashes the rogue. And because of this bash, we get a nice triple fear on all of them. So they're at a point where it's like, okay, do I press communion? Or do I have to like trick it and press all my CDs here? So we open, we get a kidney. Yam presses Moonfire to get combat on Wiz. And then we they bash Pika. And this is what happens. Right here. I think he tries to bash. I think we probably get an evasion on the bash as well. And we get a triple fear on Mez, Sidu, and Sam I Am. So they can't actually peel this entire opener. And because of this, we get a nice triple root as well. So we get a triple earth grab totem. And Sidu's at a point where it's like, okay, they're opening on me. I'm just going to press communion. But communion does not save you if everyone on the team is doing damage. And I think I get a Stormkeeper here at the same time that all of us pop our CDs, so. Yep, right here we get the Stormkeeper cast as well. We get PI on the Rogue. And I mean, that's all she wrote. Ugh. And I think a huge part here too is I really don't think they expected us to open that hard. So if you notice, he doesn't communion until like 20%. So we have a Siphon sitting full and he doesn't press communion until like 20% or so. So I don't think they were expecting this. So right here, right here, he presses communion here, right at 20%. Crazy. Communion is a heal, yeah. So communion, Emerald communion for evokers is a heal over time effect channeled spell it's a channeled spell that heals and gives mana to the evoker yeah i i think they just expected to to have certain people press cooldowns to peel but at the end of the day whenever you do as whenever you do a swap like that people don't really expect it right so that that was well that was well played by pika i would say in terms of like changing up what we we're going to do in the opener um because whenever we do that people don't expect it right like let's say you fight a rogue mage Let's say you fight a rogue mage, and this is this is a similar ex this is a similar expectation for Shadowlands, right? As an example, whenever we played RPS in Shadowlands, every single rogue mage would open, and they would kind of do this weird fake opener, where they would attack Wiz, and then the second the rogue popped out of stealth, they would swap to the rogue and press combust, right? So you get used to the strategy, right? Like you get used to, okay, they're just gonna open and then they're gonna go Pika. Or okay, from you know, from Liquid standpoint, okay, they're gonna open me and then probably swap Boomkin. But little do they know, we're gonna press every fucking cooldown instantaneously and see if we can cheese these people, right? So it's always something that you don't really expect and that's why it works. Look at Pika laughing. This guy's having a good time. You know what he's saying? Does anyone know what this guy's saying right now? Does anyone in the chat know what he's saying? He's like, all right, yeah. All right, yeah. That, that's how it goes. <laughs> all right, yeah. There we go. It worked. Awesome. 
Oh my god. This was a pretty good game as well. We're gonna watch the whole thing. We wanted to open Sidu again, but Sidu this time, because the Vokers have two walls, they have two obsidian scales. He decided to press one of them the second that Mez got sapped. So he presses wall in our opener, which kind of changes it up. Basically, at this point, we've decided that if we can open a Voker, it's good. But we need to stick to going the DPS and trying to get good CC on both of them and not chasing too hard. So at this point right here, I think... Uh, right here, I think we wanted to go Boomkin here. We wanted to go Boomkin, but I think Mez thought that we were going to try to go him. So I think he tried to pre-wall on our go here. And if you see, if you watch, if you watch this setup here... We try to kill the Boomkin here with our blind. And then Mez, because he thinks maybe it's on him, tries to wall. So right about here. They have Incar and they press their CDs. We have a blind on CDU and Mez presses wall. And this is important because this sets up the kill for this game. Because he thought he, we were going to go him, so he presses wall. But realistically, we still want to kill the Boomkin here because the Boomkin already had no skin. But we're basically at a point where we're trying to go, we're trying to go Samman because he has no skin and Mez walls. And this is super, super, super important because Mez is obviously the kill target later on in this game. So this game right here, this is the third game, right? So this is the third game. And this is the point where we realize that we're kind of chasing too hard, right? So we talked about the first game. We swapped up our opener, which is important. But we talked about the first game where the reason the first game got too long is because we didn't swap enough and we were kind of tunneling one person. And because of this, right here is why that situation matters and why that swap in strategy matters a lot is because we're in a position here in the third game where Yam and Sidu are kiting a ton. They're kiting us the whole time. They're trying to make sure that they don't get attacked, but they don't. They kite peek as much as they can and they don't get set up on, right? And that's why inevitably we end up killing Mez is because they're chasing so much that we realized, okay, this is the same as the first game. We need to swap targets. And here it comes. Here it comes. We open, we try to go Yam. Yam's in bear. We cheap him. We go Sham. And it's it. Look at Pika's smile. He's so toxic, dude. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Mid emote, dude. Mid emote. Look at him. <laughs> He's so annoying. He's actually so annoying. He's so annoying. Oh my god. Look at him. <laughs> Look at this picture. Look at this picture. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. So let's go, let's move on to the finals. So this game, we kind of expected they're gonna probably swap it up. They're probably not gonna lead in with Boomy Ellie because of the series that we just played. So they're most likely not gonna play Boomy Ellie. And once again, I think I think the biggest thing about this game was that we tunneled Rogue so hard, and we we realized that afterwards. But this game, we tried to tunnel Rogue so much that it kind of was really difficult for us to get damage out because the Boom King can do whatever he wants. So. We're trying to get good static fields to where we can get setups, but the reason I static field at the end is because we thought the rogue was gonna get a restell, so I tried to static field them away, but this last static field kind of sucked, but it did get the job done to kind of keeping the rogue in combat. Right here. So I would say the biggest adaptation that we had as a team today is that a couple of the games today into Liquid, we were just kind of pushing in when Incarn was up. And I think you see later in the games, like the last two or three games, or the last two games, that any time Yam had Incarn, we just kind of waited. So a lot of the time, like right here, you can see that we're trying to get aggressive. This game in the blind pick, we try to get aggressive while he has Incarn up. And I would say the last two games, we tried really hard to make sure that if Incarn was ever up by the Boomkin, that we just kind of played defensive. So this part of the game was so crazy. Because this whole time we're thinking, okay, Trill has no trinket. We have to just kill the rogue. But we're, we're, we're at this position where we're tunneling so hard that we, we kind of want to go Boomkin, but we end up getting a nice stun on the rogue. And I think we get a gouge or something on the, on the, on the, on the healer at one point. So this was nice. I don't know when they go on sale.
Here's a kidney. Crazy. You can see right here, Pika's like, Pika literally, guys, this guy is the ultimate dad now. This guy gets, this guy gets a couple years, couple years of age. And he's all of a sudden, right after the game, he goes, all right, I got to feed my cat. Are, are, are you the same guy that I knew four years ago? Are you the same guy? Look how synced our oak racials? Yeah, we're insane. He's like, yeah, I got to feed my cat right now. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him AFK right now on cam. Look at him. Yeah, I got to feed my cat. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This part was pretty funny because they pick hook point, right? So they pick hook point, And in our minds, we're like, okay. I think I was the one saying this. We're like, okay, hook point. They're definitely going to try to cleave us, right? Like, they're going to play some melee cleave for sure. Anytime somebody picks hook point, it's got to be a melee cleave. It's got to be a melee cleave. So we're thinking like, oh, they might, they might cleave, they might cleave, whatever. And then we see low wind walker DK. So we're like two minutes in this game. So I think this game, we obviously had the strategy of killing the monk because rogues with the new cloak talent, with the new cloak of shadows, honor talent are able to cloak touch of karma. They can cloak off touch of karma and kill the monk. So because of this, we're like, okay, be honest how scared you were. Honestly, when we saw this, we weren't scared at all. We were like, okay, what the fuck? Like they played Windwalker DK. Like we're going to run in and kill these people in literally 30 seconds. We're going to run in. This is going to be a 30 second game. We're going to kill this monk in the opener and they're going to go, oh my God, he cloaked my karma. Like it's going to be easy, but it didn't really work out this way. I think this game was like five minutes. When you play against a good team, it's really hard to just run in and be like, okay, we're going to run in and just kill them in the opener. Like that doesn't happen. But you have the idea, right? You have the mindset of like, okay, we're going to run in. We're going to all in them in the first 10 seconds and try to win the game. But it's always really, really difficult to actually pull that off. So they ended up living the opener. But I think this game too was important because we realized once again that first of all, we completely forgot that DKs can AMS for their teammates. Number one. Number two, after the series ended, we remembered like, oh, we can literally just kill the DK. <laughs> like, we don't have to sit here and tunnel one guy. But we actually just did not know. We had zero idea that DKs can AMS for their healer. <laughs> what did best do? So, Sivitiz, yeah. We had no idea. I thought this part was pretty funny. I didn't say anything about it mid-game. But in my head... Guys, look at look at where I am. Look at where I am and look where Sidu and Trill are. I didn't say anything about it mid-game, but in my head, I was actually just laughing so hard because I'm like, what the fuck? I'm literally standing on top of these people. I'm standing directly on top of Trill and Sidu the whole time. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. The whole time, I was like, what the fuck? Why am I here? Like... Why am I here? Can I even move? Like, can I go somewhere else? Or should I just stand here? And I was just standing directly on top of them. And for some reason, for some reason in my head, I was laughing so hard. Like, why am I just standing on top of these people? This looks fried. Okay, yeah. So the reason that this looks fried is because DKs obviously can only... Frost DKs have to do a setup with two people. Like, Frost DKs have to sit there and grip stun somebody. So... Because Frost DKs have to grip stun somebody and get two or three people in their setup, I was standing directly on top of them because in my head, I'm thinking like, okay, well, I'm on top of these guys, but I can't just run into the open. Like I can't just run directly in the open because then I'm going to get grip stunned. So the whole time I'm just sitting here like in Ghost Wolf, strafing back and forth. It's actually so fried. It's so fried. This was so crazy that he got feared low here. What's funny is even Supertease was like, what the fuck? He pressed AMS? What the? What is going on? Like, all of us during that exact moment were like, what the fuck? This guy AMSs him? What? How did he AMS the guy? Like, what is that, dude? So if you guys are ever, if all of you guys in the chat 
ladies, gents, furries, whatever you're into. If you're in the chat right now and you're against a frost DK, what do you guys say in between the setup? Because everyone's the same. Everyone's like, oh my God, he's got grip. He's got grip in five. He's got grip in 10. They're going to go. They're going to go. They're going to go. You can't do anything. You're just sitting there thinking like, oh my God, he has blind. He has blind in 10. They have go in 10. They have go in 10. We can't do anything. They can do their setup. Oh my God. Everyone line of sight, line of sight, line of sight. Like you're full panic. You're full panic. Like, oh my God, they're going to go. They're going to go. We have to line. We have to line. And that's pretty, that's basically what the last that's basically what the comms are at the end of this game here. So we try to get a go on Sidu. I get a I get a, a a lasso on Trill to stop the peels here, stop the in cap, whatever. Basically, the whole time we're sitting here screaming, "Oh my God, they have their go, they have their go, they have their go. We can't die. We have to live. We have to live." And right here. This is a this is another funny part right here. Right here when he AMSs Sidu, all three of us are like, what the fuck? Why does this guy have AMS? Like, how does he have AMS? Break the AMS, break it, please, break it. Like all of us are just freaking out, like, why does this guy have AMS here? Yeah, I think I think everybody forgot that DKs could AMS their teammates because nobody plays DK because they suck. And this is another situation. They they grip blind right here. And I think I try to ground, right? I think I try to ground and like we maybe disperse here. Ground. So I put the grounding down. Run the line. I get dragon stunned. Oh, I dodge the dragon stun. I'm insane. Look at that dragon. Look at look. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my guys. Who's got the juice on the team? Of course. Of course, the team that plays on the esports organization of the Golden State Warriors has the jukes right there. I hit these people with the fucking crossover. Look at this. Look at the dragon. Look at the perfectly timed strafe. You ran the straight line. Shut up. You don't know anything, Wiz. You don't know anything. You suck. You're terrible. I hit these people with the perfect strafe to the side, and they don't even know what happened. Dodge the dragon stun. Dodge the stun. So the reason they don't go for Wiz the whole game is because Wiz has short cooldowns and Frost DK only does damage for like 10 seconds when they have their cooldowns up. So that's why. I think this is it. I think this is the point right here where you guys can look at Pika's cam. You can look at Pika's cam where all he's saying right here is, uh, yo, Wiz, are you still here? What does he say right now? I swear, I swear at this point, all, all Pika is saying is, we have to go see you. We have to go see you. We have to go see you. He's just screaming at us that we have to kill Sidu. We have to kill him now. And that's what happens here. Token one, yeah. Right here. Here it is. Here it is. This was so nice. I tried to cast a Stormkeeper. I try to cast a Stormkeeper here. Mez kicks me, but I just hit the Lava Burst, baby. I just hit the Flame Shock Lava Burst, baby. Look at me. Stormkeeper kicks me. Flame Shock right there. Flame Shock. Yep. Yep. We like that. We like that. This game was definitely scary. Whenever you fight a Frost DK, even if you automatically win against Frost DK, when you're fighting it, the entire time you're like, oh my God, oh my God, we have to live, we have to live, we have to live. Oh my God, can you line, can you line? He's gonna grip, he's gonna grip, he's gonna grip. That's all you're doing the whole time. Even if you have like the most insane matchup ever. We're on the third game of the series, best of seven. And we're thinking the same thing. Let's open the healer. Let's open the healer. They're not gonna expect us to open healer for the third time. Let's open c -Doo. In the blind sap. Why did he cloak evasion there? Well, you see. Well, he has to evasion there. He has to cloak evasion there. He actually had to. He had to because Sam I am could have opened on Pika in the starting room. 
So he had to he had to cloak evasion instantly to prevent the CC. Right. Right. Uh, right. 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 Is that is that is that correct? That that's why cuz the CC they can CC him here when he's pressing his his damage. So he has to cloak evasion right there to make sure that he doesn't <laughs> that he doesn't get CC'd there. Connor, Wiz, shut the fuck up. We won the game 4-0. Shut up, baby. Shut up. Guys, everybody at WizK right now. At WizKX in the chat. STFU. At WizKX. STFU. Shut the fuck up. You don't know shit. You don't know shit. The funny thing is, he 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 actually dueled here. So he dueled C D there and then kidnapped him off the R. So they the DPS actually got zero healing. So Outside of his defensive usage, it was actually good, Connor. And this is the point right here where the healer has to pull on the leash of both of his DPS and tell them, shut the fuck up, let me heal you, and we're going to win this game. Shut the fuck up, sit at the pillar, I'm going to heal you, and we're going to win this game. So from right on, right here, the entire time, all I'm saying, non-stop, all I'm saying is, okay, just relax. Just relax. Line the Incarn. We're going to win this game. Just line the fucking Incarn. Sit here, and we're going to win this game. We got everything. Play chill. We got every CD. We're going to win this game. From here until the next 30 seconds. So if you guys remember, we get here to this pillar... Everyone gets full health, and then we swap to the other pillar, and then we run in. Since you guys want a behind-the-scenes input right here, since Wiz is here in the chat, and he can attest to this. This whole point right here, I'm literally saying, shut the fuck up. Line, we got everything. We got everything. We got everything. We got everything. We're going to win the game. We're going to win the game. Let me heal. Let me heal. So right here, we grip him. So we grip him one feet, one foot. And we sit here, and the whole time I'm sitting here screaming... We're going to win the game. We got every cooldown. We got every cooldown. Just play chill. Play chill. We got every CD. We're going to win the game. We're going to win the game. Let me fucking heal you. We're going to win the game. And then the whole time, the whole time we're at the pillar here, all Pika is saying is, I can go, I can go, I can go. And it's just like, okay, shut the fuck up. We're going to win the game. Stay here. Don't move. Stay here. Don't move. So we top him. He tries to get a restealth here. And to attest the drink there, the drink comment there, the whole time I'm literally screaming, his drink doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter he drinks. It doesn't matter. We're going to move on. So he gets a restealth. We try to cross map. Pika tries to open Mez. He kicks Lasso. We get dots. We dispel. And then we sit here. And then we sit here, and this is where everything comes together. This is where everything comes together. We sit here together, and we're all talking. And I'm telling them, and I'm screaming at them. We win the game, let me heal you. We win the game, let me heal you. And we're talking about what to do. We're talking about how we can open Mez. We can do a setup on Mez because he has no trinket. And we're screaming at each other that we're going to heal up, and we're going to go Mez. And we're talking about strategy. And I'm telling them, okay, I can grip Mez to you. Like I can, I can static field him to you. So we sit here. I press NSAG here. We sit back and we have kitty bombs. So the whole time, the whole time we're sitting there, I'm like, okay, I can grip him to you. I can grip him to you. Pika's telling us he has bomb. And this is what happens. You see me run out right here. And this is where we run out. We get the static field. We launch Mez onto Pika. Get the kidney bomb. We knock Sam I am away so we can't clone anybody. And then we get a we get a earth grab totem on Sidu so that he can't hover in or rescue. Right here. So we static field. We launch Mez right there in the air. And then it's GG.
And then we knock Sam I am. We Stormkeeper. We juke it, get it, get a root. And then the fact that he died here is so crazy. I actually can't believe he died in Burrow. Because sometimes when they burrow, they actually just live. And it's the most depressing thing ever. But they die. So here we go. Crazy. And I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty fucking pissed off, okay? Because I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I sit here and I deal with every tournament where Pika wins and everyone's like, oh my God, Pika, you're so fucking sexy, dude. Look at your goes. You fucking kidney shot him, dude. Oh my God. And I'm sitting there like, holy fuck. Me and Wiz literally carried this game so hard and no one says anything. No one says fucking anything. So the whole time it's like, oh my God, they have to recognize the fact that I static field them, right? Like right there, I static field them for the go. So they have to recognize it, right? Listen, 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 listen to what they say. I static field the go. Might be sending it. Smoke bomb on Mez with no trinket. See do. Is he gonna get in position here? He silenced. Big damage on Mez, and that's a. Oh my goodness! This burrow, no! He's gonna die in the burrow to dots. And Golden Guardians go up to match point. Ah, uh, Golden Guardians finish it off. I mean, Cedar had the trinket, but couldn't do anything with it because the bomb comes down. <laughs> Pika is so smart. You know what's really funny? What's really funny about our team... So anyone that watches basketball, right? Like, we all have a good understanding of it, right? We all have a good understanding, right? Let's say we go back to the fucking 96 finals, right? And Michael Jordan passes the ball to Steve Kerr and Steve Kerr makes the jump shot to win the game and everyone's sitting there like oh my god Michael Jordan with the pass it's the same thing we all understand it on the team we all have a good understanding Pika can sit there and he can fucking suck ass and press cheap shot and it's like oh my god Pika cheap shot at the guy. They lose. Holy shit. Let's go. It's the same thing. We all understand that. We all know. We all know what's going on. I mean, come on. That was a good static field. That was a good static field. I thought I did pretty well. Pika equals MJ. Whistler equals Pippin. Carl equals Phil Jackson. <laughs> yeah, so basically I'm a... Uh, so basically on the team, I'm not even Phil Jackson, dude. I'm fucking, uh, who's the guy that didn't get mentioned in the last dance? He's like a center. Who's the white dude that's a center that didn't get mentioned in the last dance? That's who I am. Who? That's who I am. Keekly or something? Longley? Yeah, that's who I am. I'm fucking Luke Longley. That's who I am. I'm Luke Longley. I'm fucking carrying these people. And it's like, oh my God, Jordan. Jordan presses the, the cheap shot and just wins the game. Like, that's who I am. I'm fucking Luke Longley. Nobody mentions me. That's who I am, dude. No, I'm not saying that I want to be him. I'm saying that's who I am to everyone else. I don't want to be Luke Longley, but that's who I am. That's who I am to them. So this game was pretty crazy because in my opinion, I think we have a, I think we had a good understanding of what to do this matchup. And we had a good understanding of knowing that we shouldn't swap or that we shouldn't tunnel one person. But the ending to this game was so crazy. This was such a crazy ending to this game. Because in my opinion, this game was probably one of the worst games we played today. I think this was definitely definitely the worst game we played today. Overall, offensively, defensively, I think this is the worst game we had in terms of the gameplay. So we have a lovely end to the game here where... The end of this game was pretty crazy because in our minds, we're literally sitting here like, okay, holy fuck. We're kind of losing this game. This game is fucked. Like we're, we're sitting here. We're trying to go boot. We're trying to go row. We're trying to go boomy. None of it's working. We're falling behind those CDs, but we get to a point where we're winning on mana. So because we're winning on mana, we decide to sit back and try to stay back and just relax. And because of this, this opens up the opportunity for our team to win the game. Because c goes for a drink, Pika runs out, gets a sap on the Evoker, and we kill Trill. We kill Trill through Communion, Spore Cloak, and, uh, and Communion. And Time of Need, which is crazy. Here we go.
<sighs> yeah, that was a really good sap. First here, the line of the clone. God, yo, Wiz, are you here? Oh my God, Wiz, you're so good. You're so good, Wiz. Guys, look at Wizk's line of sight right here. We press disperse. Look at the movement. Look at the positioning. Oh, right around the corner, baby. Right around the corner. Right here was really awkward because we trinket vanish here. We trinket vanish on the go at the same time that Wiz and I get rubeamed and I spirit walk out and link. But to be honest, it's not that bad because we're at a point where we're 18% dampening and I need to link because Wiz is also dying. So we get a link here. We save assault. So we end up 3 0 every single every single game we 3 0 So on Wednesday, on the qualifier games, on the offline bracket, we 3 0 our first series. And then we 3 0 our next series to make top eight. And then we 3 0 MBQ's team yesterday to make top three. And then we 3 0 Liquid today to make top two. And then we 3 0 the finals to win the whole tournament. Or 4 0 sorry. So we ended up winning the whole tournament by what? 13 to 0. So yeah. Right here, we're at a point where he's drinking and we're saying to ourselves, like, okay, he's going for a drink. Let's top up and then run out. So we get we get topped in HP and then we run out to win the game. And because he's drinking, Pika. I mean, I mean, th th this guy is so dog shit. Like the Pika is so bad. Like it, it, thank God he finally played well for once. So he finally played well for once and got a sap. So we got a sap on C dude right here. As you see, we're gonna run in here. We're telling ourselves, holy fuck, he's going for a drink. We need to run in now. We're full HP. We need to run in. So what I do, and this is this is obviously why we won, because I'm the healer, right? So this is obviously why we won the game, because I'm the healer. I press healing stream, and then, oh my god, this is so crazy. This is so crazy. Everybody listen up. I press healing stream, and then I press healing tide totem. And then, and then, while Pika is running in to get the sap, I totemic projection my totems to the pillar. So I, I actually carried the game. I actually carried the game. It, it was all me. It was all me, dude. It was all me. Watch, watch. You ready? You guys ready? Watch. Yep. Look at me, look at me. Okay, you can't, you can't actually see what I did. You can't actually see what I did, but just recognize that I moved the healing tide. Okay? I moved the healing tide which is super insane. Okay. Pika gets a sap on Seadu. He gets a sap on Seadu. He kidney shots Trill. And the, and, and the rest is history. It's right here. We actually kill this guy. We kill this guy through communion, cheat death, spore cloak, and time of need, which is a evoker talent. Fucking insane. Insane. <laughs> Dude, I I didn't re I didn't realize that that Jason's cam shakes. I didn't realize his cam shakes when we win the game. Look at this camera. Look at this camera. Uh, <laughs> look at his face. Dude. Oh my god. Yep. We get the camera shake. We get the webcam shake, and it's fucking over. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. God damn.